Hello, Leo Robber. Hi, Richard. Nice to be here. Well, it's great to have you here. And uh, your exhibition is Gardens, Fragments of Life and Loss uh, on a King Street Gallery on William in Sydney. Why the focus for you for so long on gardens? Well, I suppose my love of gardens first started with um, trailing around after my father and he was a keen gardener in, uh, when we were living in Queensland. And I have quite a lot of early memories from when I was about three, um, you know, just following around him with his um, bucket of weeds and his fork. And, um, and it's something that I just uh, have always been drawn to. So in this case of this exhibition, you sound as though you were drawn to it quite seriously. It's a, it's a, a serious contemplation, fragments of life and loss. Tell us about the title. Well, the title, you know, the th thing about gardens is um, they're constantly changing spaces where the, you're always working a way to try and improve their aesthetic qualities. Uh, you're pruning and weeding and uh, working with them. But, uh, you know, during this drought period is a really good example as we've, um, you know, just come out of this really serious drought. I've lost quite a lot of, uh, one, one tree in particular that I, I love, it used to have this green cave in, in the summer months that would keep this part of the garden really cool. And during the drought, it got, it, it, so it's a, about a 60 or 70 year old plum tree, heritage plum tree and it just dropped dead. So it's kind of, uh, a, and I've painted that tree on and off for the last 12 years. So that idea of um, death, resurrection, um, uh, mold, uh, compost, decay is always at the heart of a garden. Uh, and yet at the same time, the, the visual results that you present us with appear to be exuberant. They're, they're almost a halcyon garden. Uh, how real and how imagined are the works? Uh, now, that's a good question, Richard, because really as a, an artist, I don't know whether I'm an artist who gardens or a gardener who paints. Um, but, <laughs> You're both, um, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I sort of flip between the two. But, uh, you know, the thing, about, uh, the thing about painting is I can actually... I can, I can make the garden look the way I hope it to be. <laughs> that means that you can literally garden on the canvas in an idealistic That's way. Right. Well, <laughs> but, and, and actually, yeah, sorry. I was just going to say, let's have a look at, uh, at, at some of the works. Um, and of course, um, ideally, uh, if somebody is listening to and watching this conversation, we hope they'll also be on the website of the gallery looking at uh, the exhibition, the images in the exhibition. So let's refer to some of those works now and get a little bit of a sense of some of the things that uh, you've just been talking about, but how you, how you offer it as a, as a work. Um, one of the first works uh, in the exhibition is quite a large work, uh, two metres uh, in length, uh, a metre high. It's called Fragments Seeking Connections. And I'm very interested in the way that you have broken up. It's not just a single image. It's a whole series of images connected together. Tell us about that. Well, it's interesting that you, start, you started with that painting because that's almost where I finished the, the work, the, the body of work. So, so that painting uh, I, I produced over about a 12-month period, and it is partly... Uh, it's a different way of working to what I've been doing in the past. And what, I, what I've done is I've taken images from existing paintings within this show and I've reframed them and joined them together to make this work. Um, and, you know, for a lot of, long time I've been painting on plein air, but this is the first time I've actually used um, uh, Photoshop to create a work. <laughs> So I, I basically created a, a, um, a study from existing works and then, then painstakingly produced it over a period of 12 months. And you're right, the, the title leads me to, um, you know, the idea that um, 
I was constantly, so I took those images, but I've actually added to them and made them more complex. And the ideas of these twigs reaching out, touching the, the next frame and the idea of, you know, when you're in the garden, I, I'm really drawn to particularly autumn as a time where you've got this, you know, amazing, um, you're looking through trees and twigs and branches where leaves have fallen. So you've got this almost like matrix of uh, interesting things to look at. You do seem with this exhibition to have been fascinated by the idea of, of connected images, different parts of the garden, perhaps all seen at the same time. Uh, there's a huge work, um, Big Garden Split Views Hilston is the title of it. It's nine panels. It's uh, enormously big. Um, tell us about that. And, and is that literally just a, a way of seeing an entire garden from different perspectives all in one go? Yeah, so it, 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 is, it very much is about that. Um, you know, when I wanted to create a, a work that sort of simulated my feeling of walking through a garden and the different views that you might experience as you turn a corner and capture a view. They started off uh, as individual paintings and, uh, and I slowly joined them together. And as I joined them together, I, I then shifted them around and, and started joining. So there is, there are links between each of those, those uh, individual panels to make one big work. So that work evolved over about a two year period. And does it now feel that that whole is, is in some ways greater than the sum of the parts? Absolutely. Because uh, someone else said to me, oh, now I, I really like that one in the middle. Can I buy that one? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, when when you're facing financial uh, disaster, with a lot of people are at the moment, uh, that's quite tempting. But uh, no, it is definitely uh, one work. It's a single work and a, and a single vision. Uh, yes. This exhibition, of course, as you were explaining, is a a wonderful big vision of you as a an artist gardener. I don't know whether I can separate those two words for you or not. Um, but it's also the first solo exhibition for you in, what, five years or so? Um, so a pretty significant exhibition. Yes. No, for me, it, it, it has been, which is why I sort of went to the effort to write an essay about the work to try and explain it more for people. Um, yeah, and, and it was a deliberate thing to have a period of time where I was not going from solo exhibition to solo ex exhibition. I have had, you know, um, been in a lot of little group shows and um, been just painting away, but I, I decided and, I wanted And I should to also mention, because I, I know I've, I've seen this many times, you've been a finalist in, uh, in many national prizes and you've certainly been very active in producing work. Yeah, yeah, no, look, I, I you know, I, I do love exhibiting, but this was a, a deliberate, it's not a strategy, but a deliberate thing to step back and think about what I'm doing. I, well, I, actually, I heard someone say, oh, that, that's that guy that paints gardens. And I thought, I thought to myself, is that what I am? <laughs> I want them to be able to say, that's the guy that paints gardens, and they're really interesting. <laughs> so I think I wanted to have a period of self-reflection and, and self-critique about my work to think, if I'm going to paint gardens, if I'm going to continue with this same subject, how can I do it differently and, in a, and, and probably in a more intense way, a more visually intense way? And I wanted to, um, I suppose, I paint less works, but spend more time on them and really, really think about, uh, I suppose, those connections I can draw with my personal experience and understanding of gardens and the physical, you know, love I have of gardening and, and the aesthetics that, that are actually in the physical act of gardening and try and transfer that to the paintings in a more meaningful way. You do also seem in this exhibition to be asking the viewer to do more than just look at a nice image of, uh, of some foliage or a, a particular part of a garden. You do seem yeah. to be asking the viewer to, 
to make connections, to see patterns, to understand those alignments um, mm -hmm. and those uh, elements that go into it. Um, let's look at another work uh, which perhaps is quite explicit about asking for that, that understanding of arrangements uh, of objects. This is Shanghai Garden, One View Flipped and Repeating is the title, yeah. quite a title. Yeah. Uh, tell us, one view flipped and repeating, what's going on here? Well, you know, I had the, the, the idea of the show was to just paint um, images of my garden. And, but this is where I fell down. In the meantime, I went, <laughs> I went, to, uh, I went to China for a conference and to deliver a paper around a project that I'm doing called The Painted River. And uh, I spent time going to a few uh, Shanghai gardens and I did some painting there. And this, this is actually from, uh, I have a dear friend who lives in China and um, I did a small painting in a garden in Shanghai and uh, gave that painting to him and then started this in, a, in the hotel room while I was there. And then, uh, but it's only really from that one painting. So to actually make it work, I decided to just put it into Photoshop and I, it's really actually one, one image uh, of a garden flipped and repeated uh, to make a sort of a, almost a semi, I don't like the word surreal, but a surreal, <laughs> a surreal, um, a surrealist impression of that place. Um, because, it, you know, it, there was a lot of bamboo and these quite unusual trees uh, that that had that sense there. So it's really trying to capture a bit of extension of that place. You mentioned going to China for a conference, delivering a paper and so on. Your life um, uh, is not quite as simple as you labelled it as an artist gardener or a gardener who, who paints, uh, because you also balance life as a professional artist with life as a professional academic at uh, one of Sydney's large universities. How do you find that balance and, and why do you choose that balance? Uh, look, you know, I don't sleep a lot, so I, I like to fill in my time. <laughs> uh, look, you know, I, I do actually love teaching and I do actually love a lot of different things. And, you know, I, I have worked as a designer and, you know, often I used to keep the designer side of myself quiet um, because, you know, fine art has this kind of, weird relationship with design. But um, I, I do find that the crossover and the interaction I have with students and the love of ideas actually feeds into my fine artwork quite a lot. Um, and I suppose I've just started to make those connections uh, work for me in, in a way that, um, uh, look, you know, the world is a complex place. And I think, um, I did have an artist say to me, oh, you could never, you can never be a successful artist if you, if you just don't do it all the time. Uh, you know, having a job um, is a distraction. I actually find in some ways it, it actually gives me time to think about people and other things because painting is a quite a selfish, um, uh, you know, it's got, it's got that, you know, it's a selfish kind of lonely process. Um, and I love people. And I do think my connection with my academic world actually feeds nicely into my... my so it is, it is uh, that academic connection perhaps is an enrichment to use um, yeah. perhaps your, your earlier metaphor. It, it, it may be even the compost that helps your, your, uh, your paintings grow a little. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I, you know, the insight that students can give you, uh, you. Sometimes people say the most amazing things, you know, innocently or without you know, they're reflecting on something and it, it, it enlivens your own ideas. There is almost, um, I'm not suggesting you've done this too directly, but there is almost a, an educational component in this current exhibition, going back to the works in it. Um, one of, the, um, one of the, the, the series of works in this exhibition is titled Practical Gardening for Amateurs and actually does include educational texts and photographs, uh, not photographs, uh, illustrations. Uh, give us a, a sense of what that series looks like and, and how you came to that. 
Well, I don't know if any of the viewers, you know, that will be watching this are keen gardeners, but gardeners have this attachment to books and uh, books about gardening. And, uh, and if you go to a, any, you know, re, uh, good bookstore, there's always a massive gardening section. And, and I, do, I, I do love gardening books, I must say. So I have a friend, uh, George Davis, who, you know, we went to art school together many years ago and he's an he's an addicted thrift shop shopper and so he gave me that or he buys me gardening books and off, often very obscure i think his real rationale is that they must be cheap um but <laughs> <laughs> so he gave me that book and I, and and you know it's it's out of context with the australian so it's an english gardening book and it's, you know, it talks about how to spray and all the different chemicals you can use. So it's, it's, it's an anathema to what, how I like to garden. But so, um, so what, have you, what have you done to this book to produce the works? Yes, yeah, so, so it's a book from 1929 and they were a bit of a nightmare to produce when I, I sort of decided I would do some paintings on them. Each, each of those pages has been coated with four coats of a, a sort of a matte medium just so I could actually paint on them to stabilize the the because a very poor quality paper and so I've spent a lot of time you know making sure the material quality is is right and I've built little back um, platforms on them so I can paint the little miniatures inside them so that they're like windows into the book yeah so they, they sound very precise works and uh, and and small and beautiful works but while you're talking about the uh, really quite physical aspects of those works uh, there are others in the exhibition um, the victorian modesty screen works where not only are there paintings but they have actually been incorporated into um, i guess what we could describe as uh, uh, pieces of, of furniture so Tell us about how they work. So I, one of the things that I, as a gardener, that I'm conscious of, but to, you know, in Australia, in the Australian context, you know, really, um, you know, I live in the Blue Mountains and this is Aboriginal land. And um, I, I'm mindful that whilst I have this garden and, you know, I'm, I'm pruning and we've got a lot of European plants in the garden that I have um, and plants from all over the world it is sort of um, a garden really is an act of settlement and uh, dispossession in some form so this this the Victorian modesty screen is my attempt to just uh, reflect on that so the idea is the before so the before and the after so so this is one side of the screen if you look at it from one side you have the before uh, yeah. white settlement, and on the other side, the landscape after white settlement. Yeah, that's right. And the uh, I worked with a neighbour of mine who's a fine woodworker, and we sourced some some uh, Australian red cedar, which is very very hard to get now. You know, it's been logged almost out of existence, and uh, so we sourced some some Australian red cedar from 1860s from a house in Wollongong, and so that has been lovingly brought back and reworked into the screen. And so it was very much a labor of love for both of us and, and, and a bit of a team effort, which was, you know, as an artist who just, you know, he would, he would be working away on the, on the timber part of the screen, coming down and go, when are you going to finish the paintings? Hurry up. You know, so we were, it was, uh, it was a nice thing. It was a nice thing to work on, but uh, you know, it's one of those things. It's something that an idea that I had that, I wanted to pursue and we just did it. I just did it. Yeah. yeah. Finally, as we come to a conclusion, let's go to the painting, which is in fact on the cover of the catalogue uh, yeah. for your exhibition. Uh, it's a painting entitled Waiting for Winter. Uh, it's, it's lush and beautiful. Uh, the colours are rich, but there is a very enigmatic figure in the work. Who or what is it? Well, it's, it's uh, you know, well, I don't, it's supposed to be a tiger. So it is a, a little sculpture that my daughter made, Matilda, made when she was about uh, 12. 
And it's the first, first time I've seen something that she made that I went, mm, that's very good. And she sort of knocked it out quickly, but understood this form and it sits in the lounge room. Uh, and it's one of those things, you know, when you have objects that of people that you know, and you just love them, and it's got this energy about it. I'm really interested in this work. I'm really interested in the idea of the stage and setting up a kind of image that you have the foreground, the midground, and the background. And um, and I've done several versions of this type of composition. Uh, you know, part still life, part garden painting, and I really love framing things in a complicated way. So it kind of very set up idea, but it's, it's really my love of that object and the way that the figure looks back at the viewer. Uh, and it was also the kind of, I suppose, the narrative content of the painting is that waiting for winter, it was, um, you know, uh, autumn never came and this kind of, you know, it's so warm, you know, we're experiencing these warming climates and the garden forgets to drop leaves and change into the next season. So it was really, as a gardener, that seasonal kind of fear of it not moving the way we should. Well, in these very strange times of social isolation, uh, none of us are moving quite in the way that we are used to. Um, but I do hope that you have chance to enjoy your garden in the place where you are at, at present. Leo, thank you for sharing your exhibition. Pleasure, Richard, and thank you for wearing that wonderful shirt that, that talks of gardens. <laughs> My pleasure. All the best. Thanks, Richard.